Well, boys, we are back down here in the basement working on some stuff. And no, we're not working on cylinder heads tonight. Uh, we went outside earlier today and shot a video that you guys will see soon doing some diagnostic stuff, going through some testing procedures and fixing a problem that we had. Minor, but frustrating one. Anyways, tonight, we've got about two inches of snow on the ground outside. It's dark and it's late, so there's really not much we can do out there. So I figured... What the hell? I hopped on and I was looking at some YouTube analytics and I scrolled across an oldie that I'm not too happy with and that was how to make a DIY oil catch can from scraps. And you guys may remember this guy. I did hook this up in the car. I did run it for a little bit. Some of you guys were like, how do you drain it? Well, just unclamp the hose, take the filter off and flip it, pour it out. It did work. It was okay. However, it was crudely mounted. I didn't put a mounting point on the back of it. No bolts, no straps, nothing to really hook it up to. And it's also got a breather on the top, which is a no-no for a DSM PCV system. It's supposed to have a closed system, or uh, if you're making big power, you can put a breather on it, I guess. But most guys will put um, dash 16 or something, big AN fittings, have them TIG welded onto their valve cover, one in place of the PCV um, port on the back of the cylinder head and the other one for the breather that's right by the thermostat housing fed into a catch can that's off to the side um, I only had the one line the vent line running into this and you know this is back when I was first starting welding and didn't really know how to do any of it I still am not that great at it but I'm better than I was regardless for first uh, first attempt it's not too terrible um, we're gonna go for version 2 now version 2 I've been scratching my head. Um, my friend who had the other 2G, the blue 2G GSX, who is now driving a beautiful SR20 swapped 89240SX, gave me this. And this had a couple of fittings on it. It was missing this one right here. And we could not find a fitting locally that would fit the same thread pitch. Um, pretty nice little setup. It's not bad at all. I don't mind this at all. I kind of like it. So I was going to run this. It's got mounting points on the back. And then I said, well, it's missing some parts. It's missing some components. Let's throw it on the shelf. It sat on the shelf for a long time. Here we are tonight. I'm thinking I'm going to make something from some parts I have floating around, a tool that broke, some other miscellaneous pieces, and uh, we're going to see what we end up with. So let me show you what I got. Okay, guys, so here's the majority of the stuff that I have sitting around here. Um, also this incorporated, but I don't think I need anything from this other than the guts of it. Maybe not. We'll see. I've got the missing parts catch can that, I mean, this is just a generic one from eBay. I know they're cheap now. You can buy them for like 40 bucks or probably even cheaper now. But in the interest of making something and brushing up on, you know, our little fabricating skills over here, which are still obviously in the works. Uh, we're going to mess around with this tonight, and we're going to start putting something together. Now, here's what I got. When I broke, well, I didn't break, but when I noticed when I did my transmission, there was a uh, small bolt on the back of it, the one that goes from the block to the transmission and keeps it from wobbling. That bolt hole was stripped completely out. I couldn't get it filled. I had to retap it and basically time cert it with this kit right here. And this kit came with a big, what is it, a... M14 by 1.5 thread pitch tap. It came with some um, time certs, a little kit of them, and the tools to put all the stuff in. So this tap is what I'm going to probably end up using. So what I'm thinking here is instead of using this thing or using a tube like we have over here in this one, which is just a piece of exhaust pipe, I'm actually thinking I'm going to use, let me show you this thing over here. I got my uh, homemade axle removing tool scratch that my homemade uh, wheel bearing removing tool that I cobbed together here and it worked good until it started to bend you can see it's got a pretty significant bend right here on the angle iron I'm gonna make version 2 of this also and uh, this is gonna be our donor piece I'm gonna make it a little stronger on the next version because wheel bearings are just a pain and I want to make it a little bit more universal with the holes I want to have a bigger hole diameter, some big fat washers, thicker angle iron or thicker steel on the ends, and uh, kind of get a better uh, 
fulcrum point, I guess you could call it. Maybe something a little skinnier, but I don't know. This thing worked great for the front two wheel bearings and hubs that I had to pull, ripping pieces. So um, what I've got here is I've got this. I think I'm going to take off a good chunk of it, probably about, I don't know, six to eight inches of this. So we're going to use this as the main body of our catch can. I've also got this little drain valve that, believe it or not, came off of a Pepsi machine. And I have a little fitting right here. I'm going to tap the bottom. I'm going to hook this into the bottom of the can. And I'm going to hook it into a little piece of hose here. And then we'll be able to open up this valve once it's full and drain everything out of it and then close it afterwards. So that'll be kind of nice. I'm going to probably cut right here and then right at the top of the sticker. We'll make a nice six, six or so inch box. And then we're going to take a, a chunk off the side and close it in. And we're also going to do the same for the top. We'll seal it all up at the end. Uh, but I think that's what the plan is going to be. And this is where I hammered on it. I beat the crap out of it. It's all dented and ugly, so I don't want to use that part. I'm going to cut this first. I'm going to get the piece that we're going to work with first. Once we have the part that we want to work with, we're going to go ahead and start drilling some holes, tapping the holes, and hopefully we'll be able to get these fittings and this barb in the front and my fuel line piece in the side, close it all up, and uh, we'll have ourselves a nice little homemade catch can. So now that I've got the big end cut off of this, which was my tool end, we're going to throw this in the scrap pile for now. All right, so this is, you know, triangle. So I'm thinking from the top, we'll come down something like six inches. So I'm thinking right across here, it's going to be our length. So from here up, is going to be the part we're going to, going to make. Now what we're going to do, like I said, is punch some holes in this thing and get this ready so that we can screw our fittings into it and uh, tap some holes and all that fun stuff. So let's get after it. past the 9 16 mark and you can see why the uh, thickness here it actually kind of left a chamfered edge for the top for the tap here and then in the bottom there's a little tiny tiny little lip of metal right there but I don't think our taps gonna have any trouble hitting it or I would uh, go ahead and throw a round file through there and just knock that little bit out but uh, I'm gonna tap this hole real fast and then we're gonna put our barb fitting on and we should be all set <music> Now we have another nice set of threads punched in here. You can see them both. It's pretty thick material, so that was kind of the reason that I wanted it. Because it seemed it seemed like the threads were pulling through on the other stuff, and uh, the fittings are fine. The threads are fine on all these little fittings, but the material itself, the uh, box over there, the uh, eBay style catch can, they were just spinning in there. So. All right, let me uh, grab my other fitting here, and we're going to test fit that real fast, and I think that's going to be it for tonight. So we got our other fitting in here. She's in there nice and tight. I ended up having to run the tap through twice just to clean out a little bit of scum that was in the uh, thread still. But other than that, we are all set. So I'm going to go ahead and call it there. We've got our holes tapped. We've got our section of pipe snapped off. Uh, we're going to cut this right here. And that's going to make up the body of this catch can. Um, yeah, it's coming along pretty good so far. We'll see you guys back here in the morning, which is going to be right now. 
back in the morning guys what's going on so I was out of saw blades so I had to go pick up some saw blades those are right here and I picked up a few more uh, 3 8 see if I can focus on this 3 8 in 3 8 out these are a little smaller than the big one that I've got in my pocket here pull that out and so I think this is gonna be the vent line or no this line will go to the intake uh, pipe these two are gonna go from the PCV line from the valve cover vent and then this will go into the uh, intake pipe so it can pull vacuum and uh, yeah that's what we're gonna do for the setup they're all the same thread I'm gonna get after this I gotta cut the rest of this length off of here this thing's gonna get down to uh, six and a half inches I believe was our mark where's the line right here you can kind of see Right down there is the line, so that's the length from here up, and that's what we're going to use as our catch cam. So. Okay, so we've got our body here, and this is what we're going to use. I've got some other plate steel that I'm going to use to weld this shut. We're going to build the baffle that is going to go on the inside of this. And uh, we're just going to keep on trucking along. This is the part. It's got the three holes. They're all drilled and tapped, one on each side. Now, this hole and this hole are going to be where the oil vapors come from. So I'm thinking I'm going to make a baffle that goes down across, but leaves this side hole open. And that way, when inflow gas hits, it will hit that baffle and have to kind of condense and drop down and then the air can come up through holes in that baffle so this will have a baffle behind it this will have a baffle behind it this will just be open to the air on the top there are the drain level fittings that I've got from the other one and I think what I'm gonna do is put these on the right side someplace down here and just drill and tap that hole for those that way we can have a level and we can have our PCV valve cover vent to the intake our level will be on the right side of it and then we'll have our drain on the bottom so far we've got our PCV line and our vent line and our to the intake side I made this little piece of metal out of some thin uh, mild steel and it sits in here like so and if you'll notice both of these ports go in and you can see that piece of steel on the inside and that's going to hopefully let the air and oil vapor hit this wall and condense down below I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is put this down in you can see the difference in length there is a gap at the bottom of it I think I'm gonna punch a couple of holes right here on the sides and hopefully promote some airflow through it I'm gonna go ahead and punch a couple holes in this plate just to promote flow so it doesn't end up like sucking the oil up from the bottom we want to have some reliefs here um, and then I'm gonna tack this in place in just a few minutes. Okay guys, I've devised a solution for this issue. So we've got hole one, two, and three. So I've made this plate right here. I'm gonna punch a couple of holes going down it. Now I don't know if I'll do that many, but I wanna have enough holes to let this thing breathe. This slides in and blocks off the right two vents, this one and this one. So these are coming from the engine. The left one over here in this other chamber is going out. I made this other little piece of steel. I'm going to put some more holes into this, and this fits in right here 
So if you can kind of get what I've got here, I've got three chambers. This chamber is where the uh, oil air comes in. It goes through these little holes. There's a wall in the face, a wall in the back, and then another wall here with holes in it. So this first wall has holes on the right side of it, which is off to the right corner. So if the air comes in in the middle of this, it's going to hit this wall, go through this curve, so it's a whole bunch of wall contact, and then the air will travel through the little holes into this third chamber where my index finger is. Another wall on the right, another wall here, and this little wall right here going into the clean th side, the third chamber, which my left finger, my left index is in, that's going to uh, have holes in it also, and that's going to allow the cleaned air, the unaerated oil air, whatever you want to call it, to come back out, go through the intake, and then back and be burned up. So. Hey guys, I've got the baffles built and the holes drilled and it's gonna look something kind of like this and it's gonna fill the inside of our new catch can I think this will be more than enough baffling so uh, I guess next I gotta punch a couple more holes in for our level and put a bottom on this thing once we get this baffle in place and put a top on it so I'm gonna start chipping away at this stuff and uh, I'll see you guys when the progress is there got our baffles installed here so if you look through there it hits a wall and here it hits a wall vents through so this is going to be like a hopefully a little chamber that helps secondary filtration primary is going to start here it's going to swirl in here go through here here and then back out the side and be suctioned out now the bottom you can see Obviously, it doesn't reach all the way to the bottom, and that's kind of all right. What I was expecting is as soon as the air hits the top edges here, the oil will just run down to the bottom. The clean air can filter through here and then get vacuumed into the intake. So I think this is going to work. i got to clean up some of these uh, spots where the welds are kind of hanging out, wash the inside of this out real good, and we are going to start making our top cap our bottom cap and get our drain installed and our fittings can all go in so we're in the home stretch it's been down here messing around with this for a little while I've got a 16 gauge cap cut out of some steel I've got all this cleaned out real nice our baffles are in place welded in all of our tapping is done with the exception of the drain that looks like it's gonna fit on there real nice so I'm gonna weld this on go around and grind all this nice and smooth and uh, we're pretty close I'm gonna try to get some decent welds put down on this real fast and I'll be back with you guys here in just a minute okay boys so I am done for today messing with this I've got all my ports made I've got the top welded on. I gotta go over and sand it real nice and smooth real quick. Finish a couple welds on the bottom and put our drain in. But we are almost there. I don't know if you can see up in there, but she's just about ready. Then we can paint it and be good to go. So I will see you back here when we finish this thing up tomorrow. We are back down here. This is what I've got so far. This is just a quick update. It's been a few days since I've been down here. Uh, we're gonna mount on this side in in out level got a cap off the bottom got to finish cleaning this up i got to do another pass of weld on this because i did a terrible job at it I had my uh wire feed speed way 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 slow this is out of an old trailer hitch and some scrap metal i think we spent i don't know maybe ten dollars on some fittings i i can't remember anyways i'm gonna get back after it
we've got our weld laid down. Finally uh, getting kind of used to using this thing again. Uh, now we're going to come over here and get our base plate ready, which is right down here. So I'm going to give this thing a little center punch, and we're going to start drilling this out and tapping it. And then we have to buzz this onto the bottom, clean everything up, and uh, we'll be ready for our final assembly. Of course, we still have to paint it. finished building this thing we've got our drain we've got our welds all done everything looks pretty good there's that spot right here that I didn't want to take out but I think this will work I'm gonna start putting stuff in here Teflon taping it and tightening all the fittings in give this a nice little coat of black paint so let's get after that end of this one we've got our uh, ports our barbs right front side I've got to put this little level hose in here and attach my ball valve which I put together right here it's just a hose gonna slip over the bottom but uh that's our catch can it's completely built the paint is uh, a little wet still she's just drying up so I'm gonna leave it right there I'm gonna end this one off it's been a fun one we got to mess around do a little fabbing uh, work on our our welding skills or grinding skills and all that fun stuff so it's been super fun so if you guys have stuck around to the end I definitely appreciate it it's a big thumbs up to you guys and uh, thanks for watching all the way through thanks for supporting the channel and uh, yeah we're gonna throw this in the car here in the next day or two once this paint dries and we're gonna test it out so this is gonna be great it's gonna keep all the extra oil from blowing into the uh, intake manifold through the valve cover vent line and the PCV line blah 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 I'm excited uh, I don't know how much it'll hold I don't know how long it's gonna take to fill it and obviously we're not gonna get full brim we're only gonna get a little reading here but once we get about halfway full all I gotta do is pull that little ball valve and drain her out so uh, make sure you guys subscribe stay tuned for the next episode here when we install this thing and do some other tuning work uh, go to todaysprojectguide.com if you feel like supporting the channel further and checking out some of our merch. We've got tons of stickers, shirts, hoodies, sweaters, long sleeves, all sorts of cool stuff for him and for her. So if there's any DSM stuff that you guys want to pick up, hop on over there, grab a hoodie, grab a t-shirt, grab some merch. Everything you guys spend ends up coming straight back around full circle and going directly into putting content out and buying more tools and buying more cool parts so we can shoot more videos. So. Anyways, guys, it's been fun. I am super excited about how this came out. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. Way better than version one. So for those of you who watched the how to build one out of an exhaust pipe, here you go, a proper catch can. So anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.